We acknowledge Uyghur people, the traditional Aboriginal owners of the land where we are joining in commemoration of the Anzac service today. We pay our respects to Elders past and present and emerging. We recognise their connection to country and their role in caring for and maintaining country over thousands of years. May their strength and wisdom be with us today. Today, we are taking time to honour the memory of those gallant men and women who sacrificed their lives in service to our country. We know there is no doubt in your hearts and minds that today is especially significant. In places throughout Australia and overseas, virtual ceremonies like this are a permanent reminder that our Anzacs thought this wonderful country of ours was worth fighting and dying for. We pause today to acknowledge all current and former members of our Defence Forces. You are in our thoughts. We are forever grateful. Good morning and welcome, Mansfield community, to our 2020 Anzac Day commemoration service. April the 25th, 1915, is indelibly etched in Australian history as the beginning of the ill-fated Gallipoli campaign. The campaign that created the Anzac tradition of resourcefulness, good humour and mateship. The campaign that proved the fighting spirit of the previously untested Anzac forces. As we take this time to commemorate the service to our country and sacrifice of service people in many wars and campaigns, it's a good time to think where did this all start for Queensland. On the 24th of September 1914, the HMAT Omra, a transport ship, embarked from Pinkenbar in Brisbane and headed for Europe. On board were the members of the 9th and 15th Battalion, both Queensland-based forces. They did not know where they were headed or what that awaited them when they arrived, but they were unselfishly going into the unknown to ensure peace for future generations. The soldiers on this vessel were the first to land on the beaches of Gallipoli 105 years ago. Our country has since been involved in several conflicts and wars, which are certainly not the best way to solve disputes, but sometimes there is no option. Our Defence Forces have also been involved in humanitarian actions to support our neighbours near in times of trouble. In all these actions, our countrymen and women risk their own lives to protect and support people and themselves and others. We also remember and thank the past students of Mansfield State School and their family members who have been involved in our armed forces. Remember, freedom is not to be taken for granted. It is a gift given to us by our forebears. As part of today, we all hope for a world without war, a world filled with peace. Lest we forget. Hello Mansfield State School community. On the 25th of April every year, we commemorate the Anzac Day, acknowledging all the men and women and the animals that made sacrifices so that we can enjoy the freedoms that we do in this country today. What keeps to help this Anzac legend alive is the concept of Anzac spirit. And some would argue uh, that emerged from Anzac Day and has actually shaped our Australian national identity. We can demonstrate this Anzac spirit by showing some certain characteristics that the men and women, when they fought, showed these characteristics during times of trouble. These characteristics include courage, being brave during some of the, these troublesome times, perseverance, never giving up on each other, integrity, doing the right thing even when others aren't watching, sacrifice, making sacrifices and putting others before yourself, mateship, sharing, showing compassion and care, teamwork, working together for the better of the community, which I believe we've certainly done as parents, as students and our staff, being respectful of each other and others and considering others, being honest and showing initiative and seeking to achieve the very best for this community. These are some of the things in my short time at being at Mansfield State School, I have certainly seen our students 
do that. I have certainly seen these traits in our parents and I've certainly seen these traits in our staff. And it is because of these traits, I feel very blessed to be a part of this country. Thank you. In Flanders Fields by John McCray. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow Between the crosses, row and row That mark our place and in the sky The larks still bravely singing fly Scarce hurt amid the guns blow We are the dead Short days ago we lived Felt dawn, saw sunset glow Loved and were loved And now we lie in Flanders Fields Take up our quarrel with the foe to you from failing hands we throw, the torch be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
Today we commemorate Anzac Day and I would like to share with you the story of the Anzac Biscuit. In telling the story of the Anzac Biscuit, I am going to use two sources. One, the book Anzac Biscuits by Phil Cummings and Owen Swan and the other, a song by Australian singer John Schumann, Anzac Biscuits. Where did the Anzac Biscuit come from? We are not sure. What we do know is that during the First World War, families across Australia sent care packs to their family members who were fighting in battlefields around the world. In these care packs, they included biscuits. These biscuits became known as Anzac biscuits. They were a simple biscuit. They were a biscuit that was made with no egg. They were made mainly of sugar, golden syrup, butter and rolled oats. These biscuits could last for quite some time and they were sent in a tin in a box to the battlefields around the world. Every family 
had their own recipe, but they were all similar. The biscuits were different depending on how you mixed the ingredients. Some of the biscuits were fat and chewy. Some were thin and crunchy. And others were in between. It didn't matter what sort of biscuit they were. They were still Anzac biscuits and they were made with love and care. John Schumann, an Australian entertainer and singer-songwriter, wrote a song in 2008 called Anzac Biscuit. Anzac Biscuit was based on the book by Phil Cummings, by the same name, Anzac Biscuits. In this song, the chorus, I think, explains the importance of the Anzac Biscuit for the soldiers and people serving overseas. John Schumann sings, I miss my darling daughter and I miss my darling wife. So make me Anzac biscuits, make them sweet and gold and bake them in our oven over glowing red gum coals and let them cool, wrap them tight and put them in a tin. They'll find me in a trench somewhere, but I'm not sure when. This chorus, I believe, captures the connection between people at home and people at war, and the love and the care that was put in to sharing these biscuits. I have included for you a link to a recording of the book Anzac Biscuits by Phil Cummings and Owen Swan. In this recording, the book is read to you. The book tells the story of Rosie and her mum preparing Anzac Biscuits in their kitchen to send to Rosie's father who is fighting in World War I. I encourage you to take time to listen to this story. I have also included in our latest newsletter, my mum's recipe for crunchy Anzac biscuits. If your mum and dad are able to, I encourage you to see if you can make these biscuits at home. When you eat them, think of those people who have given up their life to ensure that we live in peace.